because I kind of refused, I had the, the blinkers on, I refused to take input and advice from outside. And I don't even know if I refused, I think I was just maybe oblivious or naive to it at that point. Um, so I give, give myself a pretty hard time. But looking back, I think if I could talk to myself back then now, I'd say. So would you say that having a like-minded community around you, would that probably be the most important factor that helps you get to where you are today? Definitely. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I remember joining the first e-commerce forum that I was part of and immediately you're just exposed to a world of knowledge. It's like someone's turned on the fire hose and you're trying to drink from the information coming out of it. It's like people were sharing their challenges, their solutions, their strategies. There were people doing private label, print on demand, drop shipping, high ticket, like, like Amazon, so much stuff. And yeah, I mean, it being immersed in that world accelerates your learning journey. So I didn't feel alone on the journey anymore, even though people were potentially there was a lot of conflicting advice and information. There wasn't one proven model that people were all following. Just being part of a community, even though it was online and even though it wasn't you know specific to the market I was in or the UK, it was kind of this global forum. It just gave me a bit more of a direction, accountability. I'd you know be able to share like my weekly tasks and goals and it pushed me to stay committed when you know, the temptation was there to to avoid it and, and maybe think, let fear get in the way. And, you know, when people do those crazy like assault courses and they're up in the air swinging from bars and jumping across platforms and stuff, they always have a safety net beneath them, right? The reason for that is it enables them to have a go, it enables them to attempt something that they otherwise wouldn't do. And that is what like having a community is like. It's when you stumble, when you do fall, which as a beginner, you will. So you might as well accept that today and kind of get over that because that's going to happen at some point. So once you're okay with it, then that's like saying, okay, well, the safety net's there. The community is there to pick me back up when I do stumble. And yeah, to anyone starting out, I'd say one of the biggest hacks is just find your tribe because it could be a total game changer. We've had people in our community make lifelong friends from within there and then go on to create incredible businesses i completely agree it's so interesting that that you cite that as the most important factor as well it is brilliant i don't know whether you are the same but i know when i first started i thought my success is down to me i don't need any help from anyone else i can work this out for myself but i didn't realize how much power i was taking away from myself by thinking i could go out and do it on my own it's only when i started to realize that there are people out there that have the same goals as me that i could then share those goals with them and push each other up together so yeah was that similar for you did you initially want to go out on your own yeah i think so the temptation is there uh, to just be a lone ranger and work on a desert island and say no no i'll figure this stuff all out myself but the trouble is that you will come up against a lot of challenges that you could have just avoided if you'd swallowed your pride and accepted that there might be some unknown unknowns out there that you may not even know are going to become problematic so heed other people's advice and warnings and you know don't be a busy fool working on stuff that you could have avoided in the first place by following a proven path yeah it feels like you almost have to put your ego to one side and and, and allow people to help you out that was the case for me and now it's one of my favorite things of being a coach at Dropship Unlocked is just to interact with other people that have the same goals and really inspirational people within that program. And I, I love being around it and just sharing each other's success. It's a great place to be. And you mentioned that, of course, there'll be obstacles and challenges as with growing any business. And so that's when we can harness the power of a community and a group to help you out through those difficult times. So we'll touch on that now. I want to hear about the lows, the challenges that you had when you went from having no experience to where you are now. And also talk to me a little bit about some of the wins as well, the, the successes that you've had now that you've gone after your goals. Yeah, of course. I, I recall an early niche that I was sure was going to be a hit. You know, that was, I was, it was a winning niche. I was going to make it big time with that niche. And I invested a lot of time, way more time than I should have done into setting everything up and getting caught up in the busy work, the technicals, the website set up, the email, like doing all of the stuff that, yes, it matters, but it's secondary to the foundations and the fundamentals of, of the business, right? And I made that mistake of trying to compensate for lack of solid business strategy and foundations with just getting stuck into the minute details and technical aspects. Now, of course, it flopped, obviously, which when I look back now is, is obvious that it flopped because I was uh, procrastinating and, and disguising that procrastination through what I thought was was action, but it was really just going through the motions again and, and doing it because I kind of refused. 
I had the, the blinkers on. I refused to take input and advice from outside. And I don't even know if I refused. I think I was just maybe oblivious or naive to it at that point. Um, so I give, give myself a pretty hard time. But looking back, I think if I could talk to myself back then now, I'd say, hey, don't try and figure this all out on your own. Don't reinvent the wheel. There are people out there who are doing this every day. Just, just follow a step-by-step -step process. But I mean, the thing is that failure taught me more about market research than any success would have. You know, it would have almost been worse if it started working because I would have thought, oh, well, is this it? Then I've made a few sales here and there. But because it completely flopped, I realized, ah, okay, something must have gone wrong here. There must, you know, there must be some reason why I've, I've messed up here. And I think that the thing to remember is failure isn't the opposite of success. It's part of it. It's part of success. So you have to learn to embrace failure. It's like, you know, when you watch those online gamers play video games online and they're like, they, they must have done those levels or missions hundreds of times like th this might be their 200th attempt the one that they then show and upload to youtube and and you know show the world and it's incredible because you, you see them flying through the missions so seamlessly knowing exactly like every every place to go and, and complete the game perfectly but what you don't see is that it's probably their 200th attempt at the same level so now with this imagine if you could have them as your coach you would get to basically start from attempt 201 and it's like that in business don't go into the game and be like okay well i'll just try and figure this all out myself you'll be doing the 200 attempts yourself which is time consuming expensive frustrating start from attempt 201 stand on the shoulders of the people that came before you and make sure that you you are benefiting you know don't let all of the failures they made be in vain make sure that you're using them to your advantage as well it will make your journey a, a much more enjoyable and smoother process to getting up and running.